Hello. As we come to the second of Jesus's words from the cross, we find ourselves listening to a conversation between Jesus and the two criminals being executed. It begins with one of the criminals insulting Jesus. It continues with the other one defending him and recognising his innocence and concludes with Jesus giving that man the promise of eternal life. Today you will be with me in paradise. Let's take to heart what Jesus promised that man who was crucified with him. It's helpful if we work from the end of the statement to the beginning, in paradise. John Milton in the epic poem Paradise Lost saw paradise as the place of right and close relationship with God. The Garden of Eden, the gift of God to his creation, the place where God's presence is tangible, in other words, heaven. When Jesus referred to paradise on the cross, it was the first time this word appears in scripture. The second time is in Paul's letter to the Corinthians when he talks about an out-of-body experience. I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I don't know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things. Paradise is a place where there is really no words to describe. The other occurrence in the Bible is in Revelation, when Paul sees Jesus giving him the word, to the one who's victorious, I'll give the right to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. This is what Jesus promised the criminal after his death, a place with God. And only for offering in faint hope, a turning. Remember me. He didn't really ask for forgiveness. He didn't really repent. He probably thought he deserved his fate, yet it was Jesus' own compassion and love which affirmed him at that point and promised him for the, for the very small turning, a paradise of a place in heaven. You will be with me. Well, Jesus must have received a reaction time and time again when, during his life, despised tax collectors, prostitutes, lepers, felt his love and acceptance. The criminal, no doubt, too. And that is precisely the heart of our good news, that, that God in Jesus wants to be with us, whoever and whatever we have done, and in Jesus, that is made flesh. The virgin will conceive, give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, God with us. You will be with me, really sums up the whole Bible message. The reason Jesus came to live and die. God wants nothing more than to love us and to be with us and to walk with us in paradise, walk with us in the garden at, in the cool of the day as he sought to do when Adam and Eve hid in fear. We don't have to wait until the last minute of our life like that criminal to be with the Lord. We can turn to him now, today. And Jesus said that promise is something which is not for some future date but is actually made real now. God is not bound by the human construct of time. Eternity, a constant living in the now that holds past, present and future in the same moment is, is what we have. 
and all who live and those who have died with Christ can rejoice because they are today with the Lord, heaven and earth, time and space combined. That's God's reality. Truly, I tell you, Jesus says. And in a world of fake news, a world of lies and deceit, there is one voice of truth that can be fully trusted. Who started a lot of what he said, saying, truly I tell you. And everyone, me, you, everyone needs a reliable position on to, to base their life. Like a, like a trig point on a hill put by the, there by the Ordnance Survey, those white pillars. Um, and we get there and we see on the map a little triangle and we know exactly where we are. We know how high it is and precisely where we are. It's true, it's right. We need a true and true base to build our life upon. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. There was nothing false or dishonest about him, nothing unreliable. He never distorts the truth or gives us half truths. He tells us as it is. You can base your life on every word he ever uttered. You can speak to him like that criminal did. Put your trust in him, in even in faint hope. He will remember you. The promise Jesus makes, even when being put to death to a criminal crucified with him, is ours too. I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Thanks be to God. Amen. And a prayer to finish with, which I've adapted from the words we say before and after communion services. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We were not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table. But it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. May we forever live in you, and you in us. We come to you, Lord, not because we must, but because we may. Not to declare we are righteous, but to, that we desire to be true disciples. Not because we are strong, but because we are weak. Not because we have any claim on heaven's rewards, but because in our frailty and sin we stand in constant need of your mercy and help. As we receive from you, may we be strengthened in your service. As we sing your praises, may we live in your glory. And as we know the greatness of your love, may we see you face to face in your kingdom, in heaven, in paradise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.